All right, welcome. So I figured I should go ahead and get a Camelzot's build video done for the playlist. Uh, he's been out for a while and haven't gotten around to doing the actual build for him. I've just been doing the lifesteal build videos, which have not been going out too well. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get a official build video done for Camelzot's here. Now, I won't be able to cover every single viable uh, build for Camelzot's. So if I cover a build that, uh, that you run and it works for you, then feel free to let us know your build in the comment section below. But enough of that, let's go ahead to start building for Camelzots. Of course, he is an ability-based assassin, so we're looking for power, penetration, and cooldown reduction. And he does have some really good healing factor, uh, so Blood Forge is also pretty popular for him, uh, giving him a lot of power, good life, still in a really nice passive with Blood Forge as well. So let's go ahead and start building here. Now, if you are jungling with Camelzots for conquest, obviously you want to go to Bumba's Mask. If you're playing Camelzots in maybe like a solo lane or any other lane, then you might want to go into Bluestone Pennant. You might even pick up Bluestone Pennant for your starter item in maybe game modes like Clash or Siege. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up Bumba's Mask. Next up are boots. We just go straight into War Type of Boots. We're looking for power. There's no real need to go into any other boots. Uh, maybe if you're trying to have fun with an attack speed build for Camelzots and maybe a Ninja Tabby, but majority of the time you're just going to go into the Warrior Tabby boots. Now, what you build after boots kind of comes down to personal preference. Uh, there's a few different starts. I've seen people go into Hydra's right after boots. I've also seen, you know, going straight into Yon's Wrath is pretty normal right after boots. Or if you don't go into any of those two, the next up would be going into <laughs> Great All Warning Sign. Uh, next up is the Breastplate of Valor after boots. Uh, for their early protections and cooldown reduction, or you can go straight into Void Shield right after boots. Those are the four different items that you most commonly see picked up right after boots. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and back up and go into Yon's Wrath. Uh, now, from here, we have, a, again, a few different options what you want to go into after Yon's Wrath in this case. Uh, for one, I mostly go into Void Shield. It's been buffed by a lot, and then it got nerfed back down, but I feel like it's still a pretty good item for what it does. A good amount of power protections and the Ur effect kind of adds on to the 10 penetration they already have now void shields aura is not exactly a penetration it's a physical protection removal from all enemies around you which can be very helpful uh, so i often go into this if you don't want to go into void shield you have a couple of other options again uh, you can go into the breastplate of valor or you can still go into that hydra's limit if you want to but for now i'm just going to go ahead and pick up the void shield item now again right after void shield we have a few different options pretty much the same items that i talked about earlier you can go into hydra's limit right now uh, it's a very cheap item and offers a lot of physical power again cooldown reduction and some people have been keeping up with the patch notes and it has an additional passive on Hydras. It has the new passive where it grants you MP5 per 10% of your missing mana. A lot of people would know, at least in this patch of Camelzot, he is very mana hungry. He goes through it really quickly. Of course, he does have his passive, so you can, you know, sit in a life essence pool and get mana back that way. And you can also stack on Hydras, which can give you more MP5 back for better sustain in that case. And again, it's really cheap, has a lot of physical power and cooldown reduction. The thing is, uh, just keep in mind the cooldown reduction cap is 40%, so let's say if you went to your best bit of Valor into Yoan's Wrath, then you wouldn't really need to go into Hydra's Limit because the cooldown reduction would just be a wasted stat now. So again, at this point in our build, we can either go into Hydra's or we can go into an item called Blood Forge. I talked about this earlier, I believe. Uh, but yeah, Blood Forge. The only thing about Blood Forge is it's a very expensive item, so I wouldn't be building it right now necessarily if you are behind because building into an expensive item when you're behind is going to take a very long time to build into that. So why are you trying to build this, the enemy team, or the enemy jungler, let's say, is going to be ahead in their build since they're going to a more cost-efficient build. Uh, so Blood Forge, I feel it's either a luxury item or a late-game item. You get them uh, in later on in your build. Uh, so you can go into that now, or Hydras. If you don't want any of those two items after Void Shield, the next best bet is just to go into another power and penetration item, like the Brawler's Beat Stick, or you can go into Crusher, or you can go to Titan's Bane, whichever penetration item kind of fits your need right then and there. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go into Brawler's Beat Stick, just for power <laughs> penetration. Again, you can go into Blood Forge in this item slot, or Hydra's Lament. Now, regardless of your build, you do want to have penetration. So if, let's say if you didn't get Brawl's Beast Stick here and you got Hydra's Lament or you went to uh, Blood Forge, this next item slot more than likely is going to end up being Tyne's Bane. 
Uh, the reason being, around when you get to this portion of your build, is going to be from the mid to late game. Of course, depends on how far ahead you are. Uh, but regardless, when you get to this stage, the enemy team is going to be higher level, meaning they would have more physical power, or more physical protection, rather. And at this point in the match, there's a chance that the enemy team is going to have more physical protection items. And you being an ability-based assassin, you want to be able to just eat right through all this protection to do as much damage as you can. So definitely have Tyne's Bane included in your build. And of course, with the starter item, sell it whenever you feel like you do not need it, where it's not making a huge impact. So maybe uh, buy this fifth item slot, maybe you can sell it and get some gold back for like a Bosch B stick or the Hydros or whatever you may need. Uh, by this point, yeah, you definitely want to have, you know, just sell your starter item and replace it with something better. Uh, again, we can go back to one of those other previous items that I talked about, like the Blood Forge and also the Hydra's Lament. Now, if you want to be a little bit more tankier for your Camelzots, there's a few different options that you can go for protections. Uh, again, Breastplate of Valor is pretty good for Camelzots. Just be careful on the cooldown reduction. You don't want to overcap. Another good one to go into is definitely the Spirit Robe. Provides good protections for both physical and magical. Has some cooldown reduction, of course, which is great for an ability-based assassin. We got some CCR, so you spend less time being stunned or whatever the case may be. And then, of course, the passives will allow you to mitigate more damage whenever it is proc'd. And, of course, you could also go into the Mantle Discord, which is basically a more expensive version of Spear Robe, except it has a different passive. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go into Blood Forge. Now, you don't have to go into the same exact build order if you do not want to. These are just really good items that I would recommend for a Camazod's build. So there's a couple items that I almost forgot to mention that could be pretty useful for your Camazot's build. You can add these items in wherever you see fit for your Camazot's build. For one, Transcendence. It's kind of pricey, but it's really well worth it. Uh, for ability-based assassins, it provides you with a lot of physical power. Of course, it has the additional effect of giving you more mana and more MP5. So we know how Camazot eats up a lot of mana that can help out there. Now the cool thing about Transcendence is you don't exactly need stacks for it to be effective. Like let's say here, I'm level 20. Now every time you level up, you get mana. Most people should know that. So that's very helpful. So even if you build Transcendence towards the end of your build and you have zero stacks, it's going to offer you a huge physical power spike and that'll allow your abilities to do a lot more damage. For example, I'm level 20, have no other items. Go ahead and buy this and I have 71 power. Went from zero to 71 real quick without any stacks. Uh, but that's just the benefit of being level 20 and having more mana. Now that's one item that you can add into your Camelzot's build. The other item I wanted to talk about is Shifter Shield. It's not as expensive as it once used to be, but this offers a lot of physical power. So you see 40 here, but the way the passive works, if you are above 50% health, you have an additional 20 physical power on top of the 40. So you have 60 physical power all in one item. And of course, it gives you more protections. Uh, so right now, Camazot's his escape potential is not all that great, unless if you want to use your ulti to get out. And so you have additional protection, so you can tank up a little bit more. And then once you reach below the threshold of 50%, you gain additional 20 protections to both physical and magical. So you could potentially have 40 additional protections of physical and magical and have all that power. So these are two good items that you can throw into your Camazot's build whenever you feel like you need them. Uh, a third one could potentially be a Frostbound Hammer just for the uh, sticking factor in case if you're not good with landing your two and you miss out on the 30% slow that your two offers. Uh, then you can throw in some basic attacks in between, you know, your three trying to get closer. And that's where you can kind of stick to your target just a little bit better in case if you can't always land your two. Or you can stack this slow on top of your two and then your opponent is going nowhere. But before I ramble on too much, it's going to end the video here. I talked about all the items I wanted to talk about. Again, if I didn't cover an exact build here that you normally run and it's, and it's been it works for you English and it works for you uh, Please let me know in the comment section below. So hopefully it's helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Peace